Today it's from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. I'll read it in mine, mom's, and yours. So, Happy New Year's to everyone that's watching. There you go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not de depend on your understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Now the easy one. Trust in the Lord completely. Do not think that you understand things well enough for yourself. Whatever you are doing, remember that the Lord is with you. Then he will show you the right way to go. Amen. I don't say anything about the devil or best friends or relatives, huh? Mm -hmm. So trust in the Lord completely. Family, people, they mislead you. Huh, Doobie? So it's trust in the Lord. What's all you do and everything you do. The world can mislead you. Friends, people, relatives can mislead you. Always trust in the Lord first. If I raise Doobie the, right, the wrong way, he's going to be vicious. He's going to be mean, unpleasant to be around. But now he's very friendly. He likes to greet people with love. He don't attack no, no people, no animals. Because I showed him the right way to go. When you trust in the Lord, he will lead you with his love. His will and his ways. And I guarantee you'll grow up to be a good person. So you guys are learning at a young age now. But together, if we trust the Lord together, we are a lot stronger than daddy trusting in the Lord by himself. Without mom, without you guys, I'm weaker than I am together. Like the thing we talked about, the rope. The rope has many strands braided together. It makes it strong. You start cutting the braids away, it becomes weak. So together we're strong. That's why I always say I need your help, the boys, even you. When I go share the word or when people need help, I need your help. This Christmas, you guys helped me at Rock Point, And you guys did good. You guys shared Jesus Christ in the kids' church, huh? Right? Okay. So it's good. Everywhere you go, you gotta share Christ, okay? So trust in the Lord. I'll read it one more time. Trust in the Lord completely. Do not think that you understand things well enough for yourself. Whatever you are doing, remember that the Lord is with you. Then he will show you the right way to go. Everything that I have learned is from the Bible. I read, I read, I read. I reread, I reread. That's all I did for so long. And it helped, it changed my mind. It made me better. Today I trust in the Lord. I don't trust in anything else now. When I trust in the world, I start to feel pain. I get mistreated. I get used. I get lied to. I get cheated. And then it makes my mind go nuts. Knowing that I'm not loved. So if I trust in the Lord now completely... I am well in my mind. So, 
Happy New Year. I love all you guys. And I appreciate all the people that are watching. Thank you. Let's go pray. All right, pray. My Lord, my God, I thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for your word, your love, your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this new year. Thank you for this new step that we're going to share, Lord. We shall trust you completely. Give us the strength and the knowledge to, to trust you. Together, Lord, we are strong. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one that came and brought knowledge to my, to my spirit, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this year. 2023 shall be different. 2023 shall be better than 2022. Things will improve in my life, Lord. Whether it be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, Lord, they shall improve because your word is the one that I trust in. You are the one that I trust in. For you said in your word, in the beginning was the word and the word was with you and the word is you. So Lord, I trust you. I thank you that your word is here and it changed my life. Lord, I thank you for the renewing of my mind through your word. Lord, you are the one that will guide me into this 2023. Bless all the people that are listening. Bless all the people that we encourage. May your Holy Spirit touch them even further to, to, to uplift them and change them and guide them by your word. You said you work by your Holy Spirit. You don't work by might, you don't work by power, but by your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, whoever watches these videos, Lord, continue on with them in the Holy Spirit. For I know that you can change and encourage more and uplift, increase people in their knowledge. So, Lord, I thank you for 2023. May it be blessed. May it be blessed. I thank you for my family here. I thank you for my babies here that I pray and share your word with. So, Lord, I thank you. Whatever you're going to have us do, you are our strength and you will guide us by your word, which will be a light to our feet. So, Lord, I thank you that school has started again. Be with my kids in school. Use them as a contact point between the school and you. And our guest, Rihanna, go home with her and with the Holy Spirit. Whatever she is in need of, bring it to her. Comfort, love, kindness. May it fall on her parents. May it fall on her home. Take care of her home and her pets and her walk and her mind. Give her good friends. Friends that are good, blessed with the Holy Spirit. For we live in dangerous times now. Don't let her be misled. The same with my daughter and my boys and also me. We thank you for our doobie. And we thank you for this day. Lord, bless all the food that they will eat in school. And cover their ears and their hearts from the negative teachings that the world is trying to push. A man is a man. A woman is a woman. There is no other. There is no in between. You created men and women. After your likeness. So, Lord, take care of my, my kids' knowledge, their, their minds and their hearts from the teachings that is not of you. I thank you in the name of Jesus. We bless this day. We bless, we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say together, Amen. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. We will shout hallelujah. Sabalaka sobrande gele baruta siada balaka. God today, God tomorrow, God forever. Shout hallelujah. And forever. We choose your way.
we choose your wisdom thank you jesus he became a man but he is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent when we expose the believers to the word of god it does the following number one it helps us to know god it helps us to know god john chapter 17 and verse 3 says and this is eternal life that they may know thee the one only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent that means in as much as eternal life comes instantaneously the experience of eternal life happens at the instance of revelation the unfolding of revelation begins to administer all of the dimensions of eternal life to the saints it is possible that in christ you can have that life haven't surrendered to jesus but never experienced the riches that are contained in that life john 10 10 the b part says but i am come that ye may have life please pay attention and that ye may have it more abundantly there is a difference between life and life abundant let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the um, strong man not glory in his strength but let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and he knoweth me the pride of the believer is that we know god and i've done a teaching on that please get the teaching you can find it online knowing god that according to scripture there are four basic ways that the saints can learn god can know god number one is through scriptures we learn the character and the principles of god in scripture number two we can learn god through the names of jesus that captured in every name of jesus is a revelation of something about himself so we can learn god through his names number three we can learn god by studying jesus the bible calls him the express image of the invisible god hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet the bible says verse 2 hath in this last day spoken to us by his son so god speaks by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the walls verse 3 the bible says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power and then number four we can learn god through our experiences job said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ears but now my eyes see at you your experience can capture a rich dimension of god this is why testimonies are important they not only show us the results that have happened to the testifiers they show us how else god can walk number two the word of god equips us to walk in victory hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people it says even though they are my people they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge there are things if you do not know about the blessing of the lord upon the saints you may live a miserable life even though saved even though born again there are things if you do not know about the holy spirit you may rob yourself of an opportunity for a rich fellowship that translates to growth there are things if you do not know about men you may receive promises and visions and prophecies and yet your life remains grounded almost forever we come opened and we say lord i confess that i do not know so far help me and the bible says blessed are the meek there is a reward for them they are the ones who inherit the earth why do we come before god to correct our perceptions our perceptions the bible says be careful so that what you call light be not darkness there is a way that seemeth right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof is terrible that you can walk in error for a long time believing that what you are holding on to is light and then in the presence of greater light you will see the futility of what you had called light how do you know you are encountering god when your darkness is exposed to you 
The Bible says you shall know the truth. It is not knowledge that delivers you. It is the information, the correctness of the information you know. You can know a lie and it will not set you free. You are not ignorant. There is something in your mind, but the information is inaccurate. It matters that what you know is the truth. You can know an opinion. An opinion does not set free. You can know a generally accepted opinion. It is only the truth that makes free. How do you know it is the truth? By the liberating power it brings to your life. Any information that keeps you in bondage is not the truth. If it is the truth, it sustains within itself the ability to liberate you. Jesus spake a parable to help believers. And it is called the parable of the sower. He spoke about four kinds of soils. Nothing was wrong with the sower. Nothing was wrong with the seed. Which the Bible refers to as the heart of man. Then the Bible says there were four kinds of soils that the seed was sown. On a rocky ground, by the wayside, on ponds, and then on good ground. And the Bible says the seed that falls on good ground are they that hear the word and understand it. What makes your ground good is understanding. What makes your ground barren is lack of understanding. And when Satan finds out that you do not have understanding, he comes immediately and he picks away that seed. So every time you come to church, don't carry a religious, a religious understanding. Oh, we are just coming to sing and let's hear what happens. And let's see people fall down. No, 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 no. Come with intention. Rejoice while you are coming. Because you know that your notepad or your iPad or whatever device, you are going to leave writing something that makes you wiser, that makes you better. The assignment of the priest is to bring by the Spirit life applicable truths, not useless truths that just information that are uncoordinated and cannot produce exact results. Don't give me an ingredient I will not be needing in the meal I seek to prepare. If my assignment is to cook fried rice and you bring beautiful tubers of yam, I will keep them there. They are not relevant as far as what I intend to produce. There is the knowledge that puffs up and has no results attached to it the bible says that we receive with meekness the engrafted word with meekness a preparedness of heart jesus the way he shows you the path that moves you from point a to point b and you see while he's teaching you your life may carry a semblance of defeat and failure don't worry about your current state so whilst you are seated here you're not just listening to a man preach. You're not just exhausting the time allocated for a church service. No. In the realm of the spirit, there is an ascendance happening to you. Nothing speaks at the beginning. It is always at the end that it speaks. Ever learning, the Bible says, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. This is why as ministers of the gospel we must be apt to teach God's word. Because when people lend us their attention for an hour, two hours, three hours, it is evil, it is sin, it is wicked to just keep communicating opinions that are not life applicable. It is dangerous to keep believing and then find out that what you have believed is a lie. You see the reason why we pray. You see the reason why we worship. We cry unto him to show us mercy and grant grace that the light that comes from him will enter us with the purity with which it left heaven unadulterated by our ignorance the ignorance of the vessel first something can leave god so pure and powerful and land upon a mind that is not transformed and nonsense will be communicated out of it to god's people so when darkness comes you have within you the spiritual arsenals to launch at darkness when failure comes, you have within you the spiritual arsenal. This is what maturity in the spirit is about. Maturity in the spirit is not measured by how frequent you have gone to church. No, not necessarily. 